Well, typically on the 208, we focus on stories that are happening in Idaho, but we would be remiss if we didn't talk about two big issues happening to our west and south in Utah and Oregon, places that often affect those of us who live here in the gym state. Let's start in Utah, where outgoing Republican Governor Gary Herbert issued a state of emergency late last night due to a spike in COVID-19 cases and after weeks of continued stress on Utah's hospitals. As of this morning, the entire state of Utah is now under a mask mandate. All Utahns must now wear masks in public for at least the next two weeks and likely into the foreseeable future. Businesses must require their employees to wear masks, and if they don't, they'll be subject to fines. And casual social gatherings are limited to household only for the next two weeks. In a statement, Governor Herbert says to make a real difference in slowing the spread of COVID-19 and turning around the dire situation in our hospitals, we all need to do more. This is a sacrifice for all of us, but as we slow the spread, it will make all the difference for our overworked health care workers who desperately need our help. But Utah's governor isn't stopping there. He's also activating Utah's National Guard resources to help with contact tracing and to roll out accelerated testing for asymptomatic people. That testing will be focused on people 35 and younger because data shows they are more likely to be asymptomatic and because this age group is driving the spread of COVID-19. Testing will be done at college campuses and extracurricular activities and eventually at workplaces. Utah is also working to expand rapid asymptomatic testing to all high school teachers in the state. So you may be thinking, wow, Utah's COVID numbers must really be high to enact all these measures. Well, here's how they compare to Idaho. In the first seven days of November, Utah added 16,027 new cases of COVID-19. Idaho added 7,704. Utah's caseload is more than double, but so is their population compared to Idaho. That's what Utah is doing. What's Idaho doing? Last week we had four consecutive days of record breaking daily case numbers. So what is Idaho doing? Well, today we learned that Republicans in the Idaho Senate are working on ways to limit the governor's emergency powers. Governor Little has the authority to make executive actions like Governor Herbert did for Utah. In fact, he used that power two weeks ago when he rolled back the state to a modified stage three of the reopening plan. Before that, he ordered the statewide shutdown in March. Governors have that executive power so they can act quickly in emergency situations like a pandemic. But now some Idaho lawmakers want that power too. Our partners at the Idaho Press report Senate GOP members are working on measures to pursue that very power when they convene in January. The lawmakers want to be able to call themselves into a special session. Currently in Idaho, only the governor can call for a special session and set the order of business. When Little called for the special session in August to deal with COVID-19, the Idaho Senate declined to take up a House resolution that would have ended the state of emergency Little enacted in March. Some GOP members wanted to, but they didn't for fear that it would be illegal because it wasn't an item of business set by Governor Little. But in the future, if Idaho lawmakers have the power to call themselves into special session, well, you can see what would happen. Senate Majority Caucus Chairman Kelly Anthon told the Idaho Press that, quote, the making of laws is for the legislature. But as Idaho House Minority Leader Ilana Robel said, it is important when you have a genuine emergency, you need somebody who has the ability to act quickly and decisively. There's a reason in World War II we had Eisenhower running things. We didn't have 535 members of Congress making a decision about every naval maneuver. Well, now to what's happening in our West across the state line in Ontario. Just about an hour from Boise, Oregon Governor State Brown put Malheur County on the state's pause list. 
That includes new restrictions to help lower the area's high infection rates. As of Wednesday, no visitors will be allowed at care centers and no more than six people can dine out together. Specifically, like Utah, Oregon's governor asked Oregonians to limit their social gatherings to only include those in their own household, as larger gatherings have been one of the main sources for spreading the virus. However, Governor Brown stopped short of issuing a countywide mask mandate. As of now, Malheur County is reporting a 23% infection rate, more than four times what is considered safe. During a press conference on Monday, Governor Brown said additionally, closures are imminent, additional closures are imminent if case numbers are not lowered within the next two weeks, calling it a wake up call for Oregonians. Back in Idaho, Governor Little has left mask mandates up to local control. Last month, when he announced the rollback to stage three, he said he believes the efficacy of a mask mandate is best if it's generated locally, saying that that's their job. Cities like Boise, McCall, Ketchum, Victor and Coeur d'Alene have all enacted their own mandates. And tonight, Twin Falls could join them. The Twin Falls City Council is set to vote on a mask mandate. In fact, this is a live look at that very city council meeting that just got underway a few minutes ago. If approved, the ordinance says people in Twin Falls must wear a mask or face covering when in public to help slow the spread of COVID-19. For 12 hours this weekend and 12 hours last weekend, St. Luke's Magic Valley Hospital in Twin Falls had to turn patients away because they were so strained by COVID-19. Twin Falls is in the South Central Public Health District. Remember last month, South Central Public Health voted down a mask mandate of their own, but they passed a resolution asking Governor Little to enact a statewide mandate. He hasn't, again leaving that to local control. But he does have a Mask Up Idaho campaign currently running commercials across the state. And just this morning, Governor Little released an op-ed saying in part, quote, our veterans bravely encountered bullets and bombs so that you can have the freedom to control your own actions. And your personal actions are the one and only thing that will defend our veterans from succumbing to the enemy virus. He went on to say this year, in addition to offering prayers and kind words to our veterans on Veterans Day, make this minor sacrifice. Help slow the spread of this dangerous virus by keeping your distance from others, wearing a mask and washing your hands frequently. Our veterans need us to get tough and to put up with these minor inconveniences for a relatively short period of time so they can have a fighting chance against the COVID-19 enemy that is rapidly advancing on them. Governor Little continuing to make a plea for personal responsibility rather than enacting more policies and mandates as his counterparts to our West and South have chosen to do.